color student welcome to another tutorial on static equilibrium in this video we're going to see how to determine the where a third person must sit in order to balance a seesaw where two people are already seated so this is the question i showed you guys in the previous video i asked you guys to try it out in readiness for this tutorial and i hope you guys uh, did try it out now um the best way to to work it out, we're going to just draw a sketch uh, showing um, where these, these two people are seated, but now only showing the faucet. Okay, so now how do we approach this? So I'm um, going to draw the same system, but now I'm only going to show the important information. So what we have is the, the pivot. So the program is going to be our pivot. So this is uh, where the pivot is. So we're given the full length of this object or of this, um, you, can, you can take it as, as a beam, as 3.6 uh, meters. So if it is 3.6 meters, uh, it means that since if we assume that this, uh, this beam is, uh, it has a mass which is evenly distributed, then we have uh, the pivot on the central point, meaning we have 1.6 meters on either side of the pivot. So we have a distance 1.5 meters from the pivot to where the other person is seated on the far end. So on the object, we can, we can actually even assign labels. We can say, uh, this is the, the person A, and then the other side, we have the person B. So from the pivot to where A is seated, it's 1.6. And then from the pivot also to where B is seated, we have 1.6 uh, meters there as well. Now, one other thing that uh, is assumed in this question is that these two individuals are sitting right at the edge of, uh, of this beam. So the forces that act, on, uh, that act on this beam will be due to the weight of these individuals. So these forces, since we are assuming they're sitting right at the edge, these forces will be acting right at the edge. So you have the weight of A pushing downwards, and then we have the weight of B also pushing downwards. Now, what we're trying to determine is where C must sit. So we're saying the first one is A, third person, the second person is going to be B, the third is going to be C. Now, where must C sit if the system is going to be equilibrium? We are told in the question that the mass of this uh, of A is 45 kg, implying that to get the weight, we multiply this by 9.8. Then the other side, B has a mass of 35 kg. To get the weight, we multiply this by 9.8. So this gives us the weight of B. So this is, this is basic, weight is equals to mass times gravity. Now, what we want to find is the distance or the position of C if this system is to be in equilibrium. So you guys can actually try it out. Uh, you can assign, let's say, um, let's say this, from here you get top one, from here you get top two. Try to see if the system is in equilibrium uh, with just these two, these two people. Work out what top one is, work out what top two is. See if when you add them, you get a zero. If when you add, you don't get a zero, then we're saying the system is not in, is not in equilibrium. So what we need then is the third person to sit so that the system now becomes in equilibrium. Clearly, by observing, since, since the distances are the same, the only differences are in the masses. You can tell that the turning effect, which is clockwise, is less than the turning effect, which is anticlockwise, implying that the third person must sit this side where we have a smaller turning effect. Now, let's assume this person only has to sit a short distance. Let's label that distance x. Now, see where this distance is being measured from the pivot. That's where we're measuring this from. So let's say the person gets to sit at this position, X from the pivot, then their weight is going to act downwards and their weight is going to be a product of their mass. Uh, the mass is given of this person as 25 times the gravity, which is 9.8. Now this person is going to contribute to rock three. Okay. Now, if this person sitting here brings the system to equilibrium, what we expect is that now, when we add the torques, we should get a sum of zero. What do we mean? We mean torque one plus torque two 
Thus, the three must equate to zero, since that's that's what one to one to find. One to find the the, pos uh, the position x where the third must sit, so that this comes to equilibrium. Now, the next thing that we have to observe is in what direction are these uh, forces causing the system to rotate? If we look at uh, uh, torque one, this is our pivot. So the rotations are acting or they are all occurring about this point. So we see that this is causing a rotation in this manner and that is anti-clockwise. And then when you notice that uh, when you look at torque three, torque three is causing a rotation in this manner and this is clockwise. Same thing for uh, torque two, that is a clockwise rotation. So if we take anti-clockwise as positive and clockwise as negative, we see that torque one is the only one which is positive. And how do you get torque? So recall, torque is equals to force times perpendicular distance. In this case, we observe that all the forces are perpendicular to the respective distances. Here we have perpendicular, here we have perpendicular, and here also the perpendicular. So there's no need for, uh, for, for having to manipulate them to make sure they're perpendicular. You just use them as they are. So for uh, uh, for A, the weight it's forty five times nine point eight. So if we use that, so that is forty five times nine point eight. Now this gives us the weight. How about the distance? So because that's force times distance. So the weight is the force. How about distance? The distance is from the pivot, and we see that from the pivot we did uh, pointed out earlier on. It's one point six meters. So this is by 1.6 meters. So this is anti-clockwise, it is positive. Torque two is clockwise, it's negative. And that is going to be 35 by 9.8, the weight, multiplying the distance. Again, this is 1.6 minus, now torque three. Torque three, we have 25, multiplying 9.8, the weight, multiplying the distance, this is the one we want to find x. This should add up to zero. So from here, we make x the subject of the form. We just move it the other side of the equal sign. So what we now have is, we can actually even start simplifying here. When we multiply this, this will give us 705.6 minus. And then this, this term, when we multiply it, what we get is 508.8, and then minus, uh, anyway, we'll, we'll move the x term to the other side. So this will be equal to 245 x. So from here, we can simplify this and subtract here. We get 156.8 is equal to, Two four five x divide both sides by two four five. We get one fifty six point eight divided by two four five, giving us x. This comes out as zero point six four is equal to x. So we conclude that our x is equal to zero point six four meters. Now we found what uh, what the x is. Now, I want you guys to get what this means. So if we have a small sketch of our setup, so to give our answer, I like what one subscriber, um, how they, they, they presented their answer. Um, they commented in the previous video to give their, their answer to this, which is very good. And they, they actually gave it in two forms. They described it as 0 0.64 meters from the pivot to the right. So you see, you actually state the magnitude and also the direction. That's how you state an answer. So they actually stated to say it's from the pivot, it is 0 0.64 moving to the right of the pivot. Now, apart from this, the other way that they presented it was by stating the same, but now measuring it from A. So if you measure the position of this, uh, this person, the 25, kg person, uh, this is by 9.8. The third person, if you measure their position from here 
now you observe that the distance becomes 2.24 meters. So this is how the subscriber presented the answer. Um, they said the person is going to see, supposed to sit 0.64 meters to the right of the pivot or 2.24 meters from A uh, to the right of A, which is very good. Both, both uh, descriptions are, are correct. Yeah. yeah, so I hope you guys are able to, uh, to follow that. So this was very short. Um, yeah, it was very short, very easy. I hope we're able to work it out. Uh, for the next for the next question, what you guys are going to what we're going to try out? It's another simple question that I expect you guys to really not have the challenge working out. So we have a person who is uh, laying horizontal on a table, and then we are, we we have balances on either end. And what we're trying to find now is the position of the center of gravity. So that's what we're trying to find. It's something that is very easy. Just try to think it through, try to find the best approach of working it out. So you can try it out. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to upload the solution to this one. Otherwise, this was your tutor. We'll see you in the next video.